Hey everyone, welcome back to another special edition of Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And we're going over a set review of the new set called the Magic Stone War Zero. Yep. So it's it's a wild set. I I don't know what's going to happen with this set and how Force Will's going to end up for a minute. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be pretty crazy. Um, but before we get into it, guys, we just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link is down below. It only takes a dollar to give us some love and support, and we greatly appreciate it. Also down below, you'll find our Force World Grimoire app, which is uh, our deck base slash data, or, uh, deck builder slash database for the game, and it has all the new set in here. And we're still working on some bugs with it because it's a weird set, but yeah. it is what it is. But it's got it all there. Um, with that, we'll delve into the set now. But the way we do the sets, so for those that are joining us, we're gonna have it all color broke down, like by stamps. So timestamp, you can go check it out if you want to get to like a certain color. You can go down below and see yeah. what it is. Um, we're gonna talk about what we think about the card, like how powerful it is, what it does, and where it's gonna get used. Whether it's gonna be not used, new frontiers, yeah, or wonder. And that's pretty much how it's gonna be, or like sealed, like draft. Per, uh, yeah, for limited, for limited sure. Limited format. Um, for the most part, though, I think most of the cards in this are going to be playable because it's its own set. It's wacky. But it only kind of plays with itself. It's really weird. But we'll get over it. We'll get through all that. Well, it used to be how old Force Will was, right? Well, just yeah. like their set is their set and doesn't mix with anything else. Yeah. But for the most part, this is going to be more of a chill. Just go through it all and go through what the cards do. Yeah. So, Sorry, lax. So be, wa be wary and be ready for it. Yep. All right. So we're going to dive into Almarius first. She's the first... Uh, the new rulers of the set, they have their own weird thing. So there's there's a lot of rulers, but they're tag team rulers. Yep. So that's their new mechanic for it. And it's tag six sages. So you have to have them as a six sage with tag to use them. But essentially you get two rulers, which is kind of busted. So it's human six sage and she judgments for two white and one. Um, and she has tag six sage. You may start the game with this ruler and another ruler with tag six sage that doesn't share a name with this card. Yep. Put both in your ruler area. So you get two rulers, but they have to be different names. Not a big deal, but... Well, with Elamiris, you would start out with so much life. It'd yeah. It'd be ridiculous. Um, if you would set your starting life, set it to that much plus 3,000 instead. So you start at 7,000. Just, why not? Hey, why, why not? Why not almost double your life total uh, immediately? I want to be way up there in life. Yeah. Um, and then you pay one less to do judgment of rulers you control and tap target J resonator gets plus two plus two until the end of the turn. That's it. Super easy on the ruler side. Well, with that, it's because it's, it has so much bonuses. That's why it's kind of like balanced, quote unquote, easy. Yeah. She judgments for three or for two because of her ability. Yeah. Uh, she's in a six, eight with flying. Enter, put target light non-chant card or light alternative card with its non-chant part from the... From your graveyard into the field. <laughs> Pay a white, J resonates you control, get plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Wow, no cap on that. So she gets to auto buff your dudes, and the alternative cards that they're talking about are the split cards. So any of those split cards you can get back or whatever, because they're, they're considered an alternative card, because okay. they do both. That's why it has to have such a wording to it, yeah, for sure. Because you can get a non chant card or one of those dudes, yeah. or like whatever. And what I really want to just talk about. The tag team is that the alternate arts should just be wrestlers <laughs> of each one. I think that'd be cool. But all right, the next one, of course, the next ruler is Zero, Apprentice Sage. She is a six sage as well. Judgment is just one white, so, but you cannot do judgment of this card unless your other ruler is Astral. Wow, so you have to make sure you kill your ruler as fast as possible. But tag six sages, you only can only be tagged with one. Uh, at the beginning of your game, put four 1-1 one -one counters on each ruler you control. Your ruler gains barrier, just in general, or your J ruler gains barrier, and then tap put two 1-1 one -one counters on this card. So this one, nah. But we'll see what she we'll, does. We'll see, yeah, we'll see what... And her what, little owl is mean mugging, like yeah, crazy. Oh, it's like a Mean first, <laughs> mugging. It's like, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah. And then he also heard someone else on the ruler side. Yeah, now he's mean mugging elsewhere. Right. So she flips as an 8-8 eight, eight barrier, enter, destroy all other J resonators. So that's a good one. But you have to make sure your other one's killed first, and that's why they're both pissed. Yeah, that's why they're both angry. You it's, killed all my stuff. I don't like you. Simple as that. And 
She has barrier as well, and she probably has so many. Actually, she's even bigger than an A because she yeah. has all those counters, and you're gonna keep just being like, I need counters. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, because that's one thing. One ruler can tap to, you know, get a stone, and the other one can tap to put counters. Yeah, that's the thing that, it, like you said, it's so dumb. You can do all the silly things. One can also tap to get a stone, and the other can judgment. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? So great. Uh, next is Molest. He is the red ruler, the tag team six ages. Uh, two red and one. Um, at the beginning of the main phase of your first turn, produce a red. Your J ruler gains swiftness. Tap this card gains deals 200 damage to target player or target J resonator. Oh, not too bad. So he's pretty cool. He just yeah, gets yeah. to like shoot things or give you dude. He gives you free mana too. Yeah, which is pretty awesome first turn. Um, and then he flips into a 07 swiftness. Enter this card deals damage equal to its attack to each J resonator your opponent controls. This card gains plus 300 for each card in your hand. Okay. So the more cards you have in your opening hand, or in your hand when you do this, the better off you are. So I guess we'll see how well that works. I mean, of course, with the zero and him, you can just start putting counters yeah. on everything. So this one, Mooj Dart. Mooj Dart. So it has a judgment of two blue and one, tag team of six ages, so there you go. If you would draw a starting hand, you would draw a starting hand plus additional card at your maximum hand size is increased by one until the end of the game instead. So that's cool. You get Neat. to mulligan three times pretty much if you need to. And then whenever you do a judgment of a ruler, you draw a card, tap, draw a card, then put a card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good. Cool. I'm going to get a stone with this ruler. I'm going to draw a card because I can. Because I can. I don't... Oh, I have to put a card away? I don't care. I don't care. You don't like lose it. So it's, it's just free card draw. Yeah. Like I don't need this one card right now. I'll just get this card and then done. So ridiculous. All right, she gets a fancy hat for her hair. I don't know, actually. Yeah. Anyway, she's a 07 flying. This card gains plus 300 for each card in your hand, so there you go. Whenever this card deals damage to your opponent, draw a card. That's awesome. So her and her and my last should be really good together, just because the yeah. blue-red like hand control. Pretty much, just keep buffing it up. Uh, next is Feasting, and this one is silly. So it's two green and one for judgment. Before the game starts, you may, have, you may mulligan up to three times instead of once. You may do judgment anytime you could pay play a card with quick cast. Tap produce one, spin this only to play chance. So she gets to do quick cast judgments with all your rulers, so it's pretty dumb. You're like, cool, and because I can. Oh, okay, that works. Um, and then yeah, mulligan three times, please. Yes. Let me always set my opening hand to what I want it to be. Exactly. Uh, she judgments into a five seven flyer, enter, choose up to two. Cancel target spell or prevent all damage that would be dealt by target entity until the end of turn. So when she judgments on their turn is when you want to do it because you're like, cool, cancel that spell. That dude does no damage. It's busted. Yeah, because it chews up to two. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So it basically stops their turn if you can. Yeah. She's really strong on that regard. So it, it's she's definitely going to be used a lot because even if you don't use it for the counter spell part, you use it for mulligan three times. Yeah, exactly. Let me do judgment anytime you can play. So... You think, is that with any ruler? Yeah. Do a judgment, so you make your other ones quick cast as well. Oh, also on these rulers, so the way we're going to say they go right now is on Energize, you get either or of the colors. Yeah, you get so to if you choose. play like white green, you get either white or either green. We're not exactly 100% on that because the, the compendium's not out yet. Like the actual rule set's not out completely. And I think to make it even more balanced, they should make it where you have to choose before the game starts. Yeah, like, but we're not but really sure yet. We're not sure. We'll see how this goes, though. All right. Grun's Ballista is the next one. Uh, his judgment is a uh, two black and one. He's also a six stage with tag. If you would call your first magic stone for the game, you may set your magic stone deck for a card and put it in the field instead. If you do, shuffle your magic stone deck. Okay. Whenever, when a magic stone is put in the field, with the call of a J ruler you control, it gains tap, produce one moon or any one will of any attribute until in a turn. And then you could tap this card, banish a magic stone, put the top card of your magic stone deck in the field rested. So the first thing first, of course, uh, for this tap ability uh, that he has, on turn one, you could do it without having a magic stone. Therefore, you already have an extra stone Yeah. at the beginning of the game. It's pretty silly. I mean, it does come in rested, but it's okay because you get an extra stone above them. Yeah, you just ramped. And it says banish a magic stone, but it's not required. It's just a state blanket. Yeah. Blanket statement, like, banish one. Okay, now do it. Yeah. And if you have zero, you have none to banish, but you still technically do the 
yeah, you complete it as best you can. And if you can't banish a magic stone, then you get a free stone. And then when you call a stone with your other ruler, his first ability triggers and you go get to go get one. Go get whatever You're like, you cool, need. I'm gonna go get what I want. I'm gonna need that when we play Brawls. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. happens to me when we do for some reason. Yeah. But but so far pretty good, pretty awesome. And his flip side is uh this card gains plus two plus two for each different name among all magic stones you control. Alright. This card gains eternal as long as you control five or more magic stones with different names. So you know Kevin Rainbow Rainmaker here will probably use this yeah. guy. Magic stones you control gain tap produce a moon or one of any attributes. So done. Yeah, so he literally is the five color deck because you get to play all the things and all the different lands. And get all the different ones, which is pretty awesome. And you get to start and get whichever land you actually need at the start. Yeah. Um, and then the newest ruler that is one of my favorite rulers because I think he's busted. Yeah. I don't know how well he's going to do against the others, but we'll see. Uh, Wolfgang Exile Demon Prince. First off, his name is Wolfgang, so he's already Wolf, amazing. Straight up Wolfgang. Um, and he's a three color ruler, so he's blue, red, and black. You may only have darkness and or Cthulhu cards in your deck. You may put a madness card when you may put a madness counter on this card to pay an awakening of a cost of a Cthulhu spell you control. At the end of turn, if there are two if there are five or more madness counters on this card, you lose the game. So you gotta be careful. He's got a sketchy moment, but the Cthulhu cards that they have for him are nuts. Yes. So if you get free awakenings, <laughs> you get free awakenings. Especially early in the game when you when Don't. you need him. Yeah, it'll give you the extra boost you need to keep winning. Yeah. And that's, that's it. He has no other flip side. Yeah, and stuff. he doesn't have a backside, but I don't care. Like, he's, he's Wolfgang. Yeah. We'll see all his cards soon enough. So, now we'll go into the white. And the first uh, white card we have is a Duet of Light. It's two white chant. So, choose one. You may choose an additional one for each recovered J ruler uh, you control. You can gain 2,000 life, which is amazing. Put target non-magic stone, non-chant card, or alternative card with total of three costs from your graveyard to the field. You may only put a non-chant part of the alternate card onto the field. So that, cause the creature the, part. Yeah, the creature part, which is kind of weird. They just don't say the resonator. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. Put four 1-1 one -one counters on each J resonator you control. So at max, you can pick two wow. of these. Which is that pretty good. That duet's actually really strong. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very good. Uh, definitely going to be played in for in limited and constructed. Yeah, definitely constructed. Uh, next is Shifon Spirit of Guidance. This is a white and one for a resonator spirit with flying, a 6-6. Six, six. Awakening, rest or covered, light red J resonator you control, enter, destroy target non-magic stone, non- or non-magic stone into your opponent controls. So, great. This you, card's good. It comes into play, you can rest a, a light J ruler and kill a thing. Like, yeah, that's solid. Fine. I have a 6-6 six, six flyer now. Yeah, 6-6 six, six flyer that gets rid of a thing on turn two. Yeah. Solid. Dep I think this is uh, New Frontiers playable. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then also just play in limited. Is it me or you? It's you. It's me? All right. Gathering of the Six Sages. One white already on the third card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick cast. Recover a ruler you control. Draw a card. Okay. It's cool. I don't really think it's going to get played. It's no, there's no other. There's all their spells that are one drop that is also a cantrip that does something else yeah this just doesn't feel like it's worth it yet i don't know we'll have to see but to me it doesn't feel like this is going to be worth I it i guess if you're going to swing twice with a ruler you can do it but who cares no it's recover a ruler not a jade oh yeah so care. it doesn't feel worth it to me we'll see yeah next is the guardian wizard he is too white for a six six human wizard um, prevent all non-battle damage that will be dealt by to J resonators you control. Oh wow, okay. that's neat. Yeah. Whenever your opponent plays an awakened spell, J resonators you control gain barrier until the end of turn. So sideboard for sure. Yeah, he is definitely a sideboard against uh, old Wolfgang, which makes me <laughs> sad, but yeah. it is what it is. Uh, it all works out. Gullwing Dragon Spirit. It's a uh, two white and three. It's a fifteen fifteen flying. As you play this card, you may rest any number of recovered J rulers you control or slash any number of recovered spirit resonators you control. You pay a one white less to play this card for each J resonator rested and one less of the spirits of colorless. Enter, recover all spirits you control. Okay, so that's awesome. So he's a cheap big dragon. Yeah. Solid. He can be really too white. And then you still have your dudes to swing in after that. He can even be one less white. So he could be free if you tap your two rulers and, and three, three spirits. Three spirits. But 
It's dangerous. Yeah. But still, it's free, dude. Uh, definitely going to be playable in New Frontiers and see some play. And it's a bomb in, in limited. And yeah, for sure. 15-15 flyer, yes. Yeah. Uh, next up, Messenger from the Spirit Village. Oh. It is a white and one for a 6-6 six, six adorable dragon thing. Uh, it's got flying. Enter. You may search your deck for an addition. Reveal it and put it in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Oh, that could be good. It's pretty good. It's. I, I think it's going to be really strong. It's not going to be like overplayed or anything. No. But it could be used. It could even be used in Wanderer. I think because additions are strong, ridiculous yeah. strong. Next one, it's a split card. So we have Princess Kaguya and Flying Bamboo. Uh, the resonary parts are one white and one. If you would produce it, will of a magic stone you control, you produce that will plus a moon instead. That's pretty awesome. Calling a magic stone does not cause your J rollers to rest. Wow. Tap uh, moon. This card gains plus two, plus two, and flying until end of turn. She's a 6-6 six, six for two that can do a lot of extra stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll see how good this is. Now, Flying Bamboo, quick cast. It's a one white and one as well. Choose a ruler with tag, six sages. You control in a ruler with tag, six sages. You own from outside the game. Swap those rulers. If you spin a moon to play this card, put in the Princess Kaguya part onto the field instead of putting this card into the owner's graveyard. It's pretty cute. So yeah, that's what a lot of these alternate cards do is their chant spell allows them to play the creature side, which is kind of busted. Yeah. But I don't know. It depends on what you want trying to do. Is if you want to like keep doing different stuff with the rulers, this one's really strong. Yeah. Because you can switch them out. But I mean, if you go crazy, you can like just when they're astral, switch them out. Like when they're literally down, you just tag them out. Yeah. And then the new one comes in to join the battle. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, with the chair and hit him in the back of the head. <laughs> that is tag team. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get there. <laughs> so, I don't know. I would like to see that kind of swap out. Uh, next is Rapunzel, the long-haired princess. She is two white and one for a 6-6 six, six fairy tale human. This card does not recover during recovery phase. Rest to recover resonating control. Not named Rapunzel. Recover this card. Tap target resonating gets plus two, plus zero, and flying until the turn. Horrible. Yeah, this card feels this, awful. This, as fast as everything else is, don't do... No. <laughs> yeah. This, there is much better for three mana. That doesn't hinder your board for a 6-6 <laughs> yeah. six, six when we just saw 6-6 six, six flyers for two. Yeah, no. Yeah, definitely this, don't play don't, this. Don't, don't. It's terrible. Who cares about fairy tale humans right now? Uh, this almost looks like a red card. It almost scared me. So, Rush of Spirits. <laughs> it's one white chant. Cool art. Quick cast. As an additional cast to play this card, reveal a spirit from your hand. Destroy target resonator. Its total cost is less than the total cost of a revealed card. Can be really good. Also, just in a spirits deck. Don't play it otherwise. Yeah, it's like it can be, but it can also not be because yeah. it's it's reliable on another card, which isn't always the best. Yeah, it's a build around for sure. Uh, spirit of Hope. It is one white for a 0-4 spirit fairy tale. It's got Pierce. <laughs> All right. Uh, whenever J ruler you control is recovered, this card gets plus three plus zero until the end of turn. So it could be a six four with Pierce I, every turn. I don't think it's that for good. For no reason. I don't think it's that good. I wouldn't use it, honestly. No. Like if I'm playing spirits, maybe, but otherwise it doesn't feel worth it. Turn two, you can have the dragon. No. Turn three, still. Still not worth it. It feels like there's so much better for one mana that I play. Agree. Spirit Ring, it's one white addition. Enter, you may destroy target non-magic stone, non-J ruler entity, which could be good. Rest to recover J ruler you control, produce one will of any attribute. Spin this only to play spirit. So I guess you can double, you get a stone and you get a mana for the other one if you wanted to. But why? Okay, I like this just for the simple fact that it kills a thing. Yeah. For one white. It's sideboard, good. I'm going to kill a non-magic stone, non j rule entity. Kill your resonator. Because yeah. I can. And I get to add mana. Neat. No, non non j resonator. So like your, oh. your, your... Never mind. Claw slash... You get to kill regalias. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Next right. is the Spirit Village. It is one white addition. Uh, spirits you control get plus two, plus two. Okay, spirits good. you own in all zones gain quick cast. Ooh. Rest to recover light. J Riddler, you control. Look at the top two of your deck. You may reveal a spear from among them. Put it in your hand. Then put the rest in the bottom of the deck in order. You four max if you play a spear deck. Yeah, if you're playing so spirits, good. you play this. Yeah. If you don't, you don't. That, that's how this works. Yeah, that's how it works. This is cool, but if you're not playing spirits, don't play this. Exactly. It's terrible otherwise. 
The Awakening of Al Alamaris. It's a two white quick cast chant. Destroy target and non spirit resonant air. If this card was awakened, destroy all non spirit resonant airs instead. Awakening, pay two, so one in a white. Rest a recovered card name. Alamaris, you control. Yeah, yes, please. Yes. Y yes, this is great. Yeah, it's a quick cast Wrath of God, if you know what that is. It just kills the board as yeah. a quick cast, which is nuts. And I would consider this a Doom Blade, also from a <laughs> yeah. magic reference. Literally, just kill something. Yeah, kill target dude, and if you can awaken it, you kill all the dudes yeah. that are not spirits. So if you're playing against spirits, this card is not good. But, but if, who's going to play spirits? But if, already, you're not, if, if we've already established It's that. just, yeah. It's just bad. It's good. Yeah. Uh, the Awakening of Zero. It is one white chant, quick cast. J Riz needs your control, gain eternal into the turn. If this card is awakened, put 10 one counters on a card named Zero Apprentice Sage. And then Awakening, rest to recover J Rest to recover card named Zero Apprentice Sage you control. So this is great. Yeah, for Zero, this is really, really strong when you're playing her. Cause yeah. You, you do have to have her untapped for the, you get the Awakening, but I mean, it's okay. Cause and, so be it. And even then, J resin energy control gain eternal for one. Yeah, I mean all your dudes. It's a blanket effect. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what's happening. All your dudes get eternal. That's so the main part. You want to play this no matter what. I mean, yeah. With all the board wipes out there, just play this. It's ridiculous. The, yeah, me, you, you. The beginning of fairy tale. One white chant. It's a fairy tale. Quick cast. Put two, two, two life spirit fairy tale resonator tokens into the field. If this card was awakened, draw a card. And uh, to awaken, rest to recover. J ruler you control, not good. I don't. If you play a spirit deck, you put two spirits out in play so you can do the dragon more. But that's just like, I don't know. This card is neat though because it's a chant that you can search up because it's got a fairy tale typing. Oh yeah. So you're like, cool. Go get a fairy tale. Let me go get this chant. Thanks, because I can. If you play spirit decks, play it because it's actually good because you can just swamp the board with those. Yeah. But they don't fly either, so I don't know. No. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> Next is Tinkerbell the Spirit and Reign of Light. Uh, it is one white for a zero, zero. This card gets plus two, plus two for each fairy tale you control. So neat. Okay. Uh, and then Reign of Light is a blue and white for a quick cast. Target up to the X resonators. Those rest those, rest those your opponents control and recover those you control. So I remember this card from before and it was not really used before. So that's why I that's why I really appreciate these split cards because they allow cards that didn't see play to probably see some sort of play. Yeah. Because they're there. Like this card could actually be really strong in the deck with spirits and stuff. But otherwise I don't see this card doing a lot. The Tinkerbell is going to be strong because she just a one drop 2-2 two, two that gets bigger. Yeah. As long as, well, as long as they keep mixing fairy tale and spirits together and then you can play that like yeah. unique thing. I agree with him with the split cards thing. It's like gives a card that kind of might be sideboard, actually just playable in general. Yeah, it gives a lot of cards extra life to do something. Yeah. And with that, uh, we'll go into fire. All right, and the first card in fire is a duet of fire. It's two red champ. Choose one. You may choose an additional one for each recovered J ruler you control. This card deals 800 damage to target player or J resonator. Discard your hand, then draw three cards, which can be really good. And J Resonators, you control gain plus 400 and pierce until in the turn. So it's okay. That one's okay, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. It's, it's not... definitely usable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next is Cane of the Salamander. It is one red addition. It looks angry. Yeah. Uh, enter. This card does 500 damage to target player or J Resonator. Rest to recover J Ruler you control. Target Resonator gains swiftness until and pierce until the end of turn. Nice. This is actually really cool because you can just let it sit there and do stuff and it gives you free damage but you can just be like that dude gets swiftness and pierce when i need it to yeah cool just big dude swing thanks and it doesn't kill this addition it just sits there and you're like cool tap this dude yeah so, so hold on you get to do that twice that's dumb if you have two rulers you're like play this dude he gets swiftness and pierce swing. play this dude he gets swiftness and pierce yeah stupid yeah it's pretty good if you just that is silly all on assault for sure all right, next one is Desperate Aid. It's a one red chant. Quick cast. Uh, until in a turn, the next damage that would be dealt to a target J slash resident you control is dealt to you instead. Recover J ruler you control. So it's there to protect your dude, which is kind of cool. It's okay, but don't do this card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's you, very dangerous. It's a dangerous op, but it could be useful if you really need to, but I. 
They, I don't know. I think there's better. They say your life is a resource, but if you just squander it, like just squeeze it all over <laughs> the thing and don't recover a ruler you control. Uh, we'll see how powerful that is. Uh, next is Alfina, the Spirit of Trials. It is two red for a 10 2 with quick cast. Okay. When this card is put into a graveyard from the field, it deals damage equal to its attack to each J resonator your opponent controls. Remove this card in your graveyard from the game. Put four one counters on a fire J ruler you control. Huh. Okay. So if you're playing red with spirits, then this card is definitely usable. It's actually really good just in general because it's a two mana 10 2 that gets mm. to kill the board. It's put into the graveyard the from thing. the field. And then it also deals t 10. Yeah, yeah, when it dies. This dude's really strong just because he's a 10 2 for two. Yeah. If anything, so it's quick cast. So the first big dude, or any dude they swing, you flash it in, block, and then it kills the rest of their board. Pretty good. This card's good. All right, next one is Fairy Tale Resistance Force. <laughs> I don't, that's funny to me. One red Fairy Tale Chant. Quick cast. Target Fairy Tale Resonator, you gain plus four, plus four until end of turn. This card was awakened. It gains plus 1,000, 1,000 until. And, Instead, Awakening is Rest to Recover a J Ruler you control. So it is good. This art is awesome. And I don't know. It's okay if you play a uh, well, Fairy Tales Spirit deck. Knowing one of the other Fairy Tales that's come back, this card's going to be really strong in that deck if you play it that way. But yeah, if you're playing Fairy Tales, this card's really, really good. Yeah. And besides, you definitely use it. Besides that, don't. don't yeah, I don't think it's it. worth it otherwise. Uh, next up, Fountain of Trials. It is one red edition. Spirits you control against swiftness. Yeah. Tap, recover a fire ruler you control. So they obviously want you to do red, white on spirits. Yeah. So if you're playing spirits, this card's good. If you're not, this card's terrible. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> shall we just go through this right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Infinite matchsticks. It's one red. I win the game. Uh, <laughs> you may play any number of copies with this card in your deck. It has quick cast. And this card deals 200 damage plus an additional 200 damage for each card named infinite matchsticks in your graveyard to target player slash J resonator. So you went on turn two with this and we're, we're going to do a deck tech th on this. But if you see this first, then turn one, you, you, you shoot it while you have well certain to play. So 200 damage on tap your stone, their turn, they, whatever, it doesn't matter. You shoot them on tap your stone with Welser again. And then you shoot them again, so that's already twelve hundred. Call a stone, kill them. Yeah, like you just keep. Because then you keep playing them. Because your your deck consists of forty of these. Yeah, so you're always gonna draw one. Yep. You don't have any option to not draw one. So you're just like, cool, match stick, die. And even if they somehow live through that, like, you're gonna keep drawing them, and yeah. they just they stack up damage. So. So by the time you kill them, it's already at twelve hundred. So if they don't somehow die, you untap with three mana with two more matchsticks to do all the damage in the world. Yeah. It is very much a one-trick pony if you go in that way. So yep. know that if they stop it, you lose. Yeah. That's just, but that's what you're doing. Like, you're all in on that, and that's what a one-trick pony is. So hopefully it works. Yeah. And it's a, it's a neutral card. Yeah. So you're going to get them. And definitely think this card is going to see play until it either gets eroded or banned. Immediately. It just depends on how hardcore this deck can do stuff and if it really changes things or not. Oh, it will. It sure will. <laughs> All right. Next up is Salamander, the Spirit of Fire slash uh, Ghost Flame. Salamander is a one red three one. Uh, banish this card. This card deals damage equal to its attack to target J Resonator. And then Ghost Flame is one red. This card deals 300 damage to target player or resonator. Pay th two red and one. Put this card from your graveyard into your hand. So this card's actually really cool just because you can keep play him as a dude on turn one. Yeah. Get some damage in for free. And then kill something that you need. And then get it back with Ghost Flame. Yep. And then you can even play as a Salamander again. Yeah. If you wanted to. So it's pretty cute. See how that it, works. It's definitely a usable card in the in, in the spirit. Yeah. In the spirit deck. Yeah. So done. All right, next one is Shaman of the Spirit Village. It's a 07114, or just cost two. Whenever a J ruler you control is recovered, this card deals 400 damage to target player or J resonator. Okay, so just say infinite match decks is not a thing anymore. This I think this card's actually really good. Because you untap your rulers every turn, so that can just be 800 damage. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I 
it feels kind of gimmicky to me, but it's, a, it's cool. And it's a human spirit. I like it in spirits. Like, it's free damage in spirits. So yeah. Like, I get what he's saying. It is free damage. Yeah. Whenever a J roller, your controller is recovered. If you have two of them, that's 800 damage a turn. Yeah. I, 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 I enjoy it. Especially if you have multiple of these guys out in the field, then you just... Yeah, then it gets nuts. And it's dominate. Next is Snow White of the Red Apple and Apple Avenger. Okay. So, Snow White is a one red for a zero zero with quickness or quick cast and first strike. This card enters the field with X11 counters on it, where X is the total damage dealt by sources you control this turn divided by 100. Okay. 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 So, she can be a big thing if you need to, whatever yeah. you take. Apple Avenger is two red quick cast. This card deals X damage divided as you choose to any number of target J resonates your opponent controls, where X is the total damage that was dealt to you this turn. If X is a thousand or more of put this card Snow White uh, the put the top part into the field instead of putting it in the graveyard. So, I don't know. This card's kind of weird. Yeah. It could be useful, but it's it, it relies on you taking your own damage, and I don't know. That feels kind of off. I, it's really weird. I don't know if I would play it. It's the fairy tale, of course. And X damage divides you choose the number of target J resonator your opponent controls where X is the total damage that was dealt to you this turn. That's weird. I like the Apple Avenger part if on their alpha swing, if they swing all that that turn, you're like, cool, into turn. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's kill your dudes back. Let's kill your dudes and I get a Snow White that's really huge. No, because it's off of sources you control. Oh. The Snow White part. The top part's off of stuff you control, which kind of sucks. Well, but... you, you control Apple Avenger. Because you deal the oh, damage Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. For free. Yeah, all right. It could be really cool that way. Yeah. I don't uh, know. They, it, it's a build-around card for sure. Build-around sideboard against aggro decks. There's yeah. no reason you want to do this against a control deck. All right. Next one is Snow White's Fire Dwarves. That's a two, so one red and one. It's a 10-10. Whenever this card is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to you. In an Oof. aggro deck, you do not care. This is a dangerous card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, very dangerous. But I mean, it is a 2-mana 10-10, which is kind of cool, but it's still dangerous. <sighs> and Holy. you're swinging. You're swinging no matter what, so... Granted, it's not that bad, because if you're playing on Marius with the other side, then you start at 7,000, so you're like, I don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Red, white. <laughs> red, white, aggro, go. Yeah. Spirit of the Fiery Stone, it is a 3 red for a 9 9 spirit. This card gains swiftness and swiftness, precision, and first strike as long as you don't control a rest of J, red, J Ruler. Huh. Okay. So if your dudes are on tap, he's huge. Or he's angry. Yeah. So you just swing with him first with all that stuff, and then you're like, cool, do all my stuff then. And then do all the stuff, so yeah. Eh, not too bad. Plain spirits, play him if you're not. He's not that cool. Yeah, he's not that cool. Plus, he looks like a mannequin head on an elemental demon. That's kind of weird. Anyways, the Awakening of Mylist. It's a red and X chant. This card deals 400 damage multiplied by X to target player slash J resonator. If this card was awakened, it deals 400 damage multiplied by X to your opponent and each J resonator your opponent's controls instead. Awakening. You rest a recovered card name my list you control. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's what a heavy if cost. If you're playing my list, you play this card because it is a free board wipe. Yeah. And damage to the opponent. Like, yeah. You heard. It reminds me of a card that I just now can't remember in Magic, but it's still really good. Dude, this card's nuts. Definitely play it if you're playing my list. Yes, for sure. Uh, the little explosive match girl. She's one red for three three. Rest to recover J ruler you control as you may search your deck for a card called Infinite Matchsticks, reveal it and put it in your hand. If you do, put two one counters on this card. Not not playable. You don't need it. Yeah. If you're playing matchsticks and Welser, but if you're not playing Welser, then you, I guess you could use this, but it But don't. Th there's no reason to. Yeah, it's such a silly thing. You're just like I don't know, it's just a silly idea. Alright, and with that we'll go on to blue. Alright, the first blue card that we have is Duet of Water. It's two blue and one champ. Quick cast. Choose one. You may choose an additional one for each recover J Ruler you control. You get to draw a card. Return to two target resonators to their owner's hands. That's ridiculous. And then prevent all damage that would be dealt to J, Re J resonators you control until end of turn. This duet's really strong. Yeah, this one's really good. I'll pay two men or I'll pay three men and bounce <clears throat> two dudes to draw a card. Yeah. All day. Exactly. All day, all day. Uh, definitely use it in standard and sealed. Yep. Uh, next up is Cinderella, the f Freed from the Ashes. Yeah. Wow, that was hard to get. 
Uh, and Rampaging mm. Pumpkin Garage. Okay. So blue and a one for a 6-6 six, six Fairy Tale with Quick Cast. Enter, look at the top two of your opponent's deck, then put one of them in the top and one of them on the bottom of your own, own opponent's deck in any order. Oh, oh and or. So you can put... Both on the bottom. Yeah. I yeah. guess that works, yeah. Uh, and then next up is Rampaging Pumpkin Carriage. It is three blue for a quick cast chant. Look, put the put up to two target non-Magic Stone, non general entities your opponent controls on the top of their owner's deck in any order. If this card is awakened, you get to put it into play, the Cinderella part, for one awakening. So you get to essentially go through a lot of their cards if you play the chant spell and awaken it. Yeah. So for four, you get to do both, pretty much. Yeah. And just like, it's neat. I don't know. Cute. It'd be really strong if you use it right, but it just seems kind of and, meh. And she can, she should get swiftness. It's rampaging pumpkin carries. Yeah. So you just demolish it. I guess you're running into their deck, but I don't know, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Oh, this one's cute. Fairy tale rabbit, uh, one white uh, fairy tale rabbit, not a spirit. This card gains plus two, plus two for each card in your hand. Plus two, two two. So turn one, it's not too bad. So on your turn when you draw cards, it's a twelve twelve. That's good for aggro, right? Yeah, it's pretty strong for, yep. for Moose Dark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're playing blue-red with that, you get all the extra card draw. Do it. Uh, next is Feel of the Spirit of Oblivion. It is two blue for a 5-6 angry-looking spirit yeah. lady. Uh, she's got quick cast. Enter, put target non-resonator spell on, on the bottom of its owner's deck. Great. Remove this card in, in your graver from the game. Put four one counters on a water. J-Ruler you control. I like it. It is pretty cool. It does help you with some stuff, so you get to kill the dude for quick cast. Pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, they try to board wipe. You're like, no, just put it put it on the bottom. Thanks. Next one is Fountain of the Oblivion Moon. Two blue, two addition. It's a moon. Enter. Name a non-J ruler card. Activate abilities of cards that share the chosen name cannot be played as long as this card is on the field. Rest a recovered J ruler you control. Draw a card. All right, so I do believe this card at the moment, because they haven't said anything, it, you can target a land and it, the land gets to not work. A stone. Because it is still considered an activate ability, which and, is dumb. And it's not a J Ruler card. Yeah. So you can name a non magic, you can name a magic stone and be like, that. you don't get those magic stones. Cool, thanks. Well, I can't wait to figure out that out because that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you go against all these monocolor champions from the last set. Yeah. Just like no, don't play, don't play. But your... otherwise, I don't know. Otherwise, this card is actually kind of good in this set because there's a lot of different like activated abilities that you can do stuff with, so you could just tell people to know a lot. Yeah, exactly. The only issue is it costs a lot. Yeah, uh, four is really heavy right now. That's yeah. the highest thing we've talked about besides yeah. the dragon. Next up is Illusionary Flower of Sorrow. It is one blue addition. Enter, return target resonator your opponent controls to its owner's hand. Rest recovered. Remember J ruler you control. Rest target J resonator. It doesn't recover during. It. Yes, Ooh, please. Yes, this card's great. What is this card? Pay one blue, bounce the thing, and then don't untap two things? Dumb. Because you have two rulers, so you're just like, yeah. cool. Tap that dude, tap that dude. They don't untap. Uh, that's solid. Insane. That's really good. Yeah, this flower is really strong in control. So if you're playing blue control, play this dude. Yeah, you'll win. Illusionary Mermaid. It's a one blue mermaid fantasy. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. no, it's a one seven J resonators. You can... Opponent's control cannot attack unless your opponent pays one. Yes! These are great. These are always just fun and good. It's a one-drop taxing thing. Yep. That's pretty wild, yeah. You want to attack? Pay for it. Oh, I have multiple of these? Pay two or three? Yeah. Don't swing into it's me. It's pretty nuts. Don't don't come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, next up is Illusionary Snow. It is one blue for a chant. Quick cast, destroyed target resonator. That was that was the target of a successfully resolved ability of a J-Ruler you controlled this turn. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. I I don't think it's worth it. I mean, it's cool. It's but it's it relies on another thing to happen, so it's not that strong. Yeah. There's better kill spells. Put and, it that way. And weird art for sure. Never Rin Fairy Tale Dragon. It's a one blue fairy tale. Uh, it's a flying one one. Enter. Draw a card. Okay. Thanks. This card gains plus fourteen plus fourteen, and fairy tales you control gain eternal as long as there are ten or more fairy tales. In the field under your control and slash or in your graveyard. Oh god. Blech. Yeah. That dude's so good. Rest a recover J ruler you control, cards you control, cards you control and cards you own in non-filled zones gain fairy tale till end of turn. This card's great. 
All right, so when you first started reading this, I was like, this card's terrible because yep. you have to have 10 in play. And you're never going to have 10 in play no. like easily. But never. when he said and or graveyard, I was like, oh, this card got real good real quickly. This card just dump out your fairy tales out of your hand immediately. Yeah, you get to play all of them and not care because this dude doesn't care. And yeah. he makes everything a fairy tale, which is really, really cool because all those cards are like, go do a fairy, go get a fairy tale, go whatever with fairy tales. Yeah. You're like, cool, mod. Thanks. Uh, next up is Never Ends Roar. It is two blue and one for a chant. As you play this card, you may reveal any number of fairy tales from your hand. Rest X target entities your opponent controls where X is the number of cards revealed to play this card. They don't recover until the next recovery phase. So pretty good. Yeah, all if you're playing fairy tales and all that, you get to free low, just tap down their stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Sucks it's not quick cast, but it's understandable. Still yeah. good. All right. This one, Purple Mist. It's slash slash the fantasy dragon and moon, what, incarnation? Yeah. Incarnation. Incarnation. I was going to say incarceration. And that's kind of <laughs> just weird. So this fantasy dragon that is three blue and two is a 10-10 flyer. This card cannot be targeted by spells or abilities. Solid. So it doesn't... So it gains shroud, but it doesn't get barrier because you can't target it either, which is kind of weird. So we'll see about that. But the chance side, one blue. Search your deck for a moon edition, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Awakening 2, you may put a moon edition from your hand with the field. So that can that's probably what's going to be used more than often. It, it puts in that other four drop moon card because that is a moon, yeah. And that it costs four, so therefore you can just. Pop I think it down. there's a couple other moons that you could play beforehand, but I'm not sure. Oh, we'll see. But if you, it's a build around card for the bottom part. I don't like that top part though. Uh, next up is Spirit of Knowledge. It is one blue for one one spirit. Uh, search your deck for a total for a card total cost four or more. Reveal it, put in your hand, then shuffle your deck. <laughs> okay, this card seems really really strong for what you're playing. You can play it in spirits if you want. You can play it in any other blue deck actually, because you're just like, cool. I need to go get a card that's four or more. Yeah, and those Great. split cards cost a lot. Yeah, because the they add the, cards. Yeah. The <laughs> I didn't thing. think about that. Yeah, all the alternate cards they yeah. cost their same abilities on each side. So you're like, cool, I need to go get this one. Great. And you can also do the blue white spirits and get the white spirit dragon, like pay one and then tap this to do to make them cost less. Yeah, you're playing blue, you play that card because it's just a tutor. Exactly. <laughs> and it's a blocker. Like exactly. it's not gonna like kill anything, but you can be like, cool, throw yeah, that. Yeah, it's throw done its job. Way. It's just it's done its job. That's all. All right, and the next one is Awakening of the Mooj Dart. It's a two blue. Draw two cards if this card was awakened, draw three cards instead. Awakening, rest a recovered card name, mood jart from your control. It can be used. It's neat. If you're playing mood dart, it's cool. If you're not, don't use it. Yeah. It's easy enough. Pay two, draw three. That's pretty decent. Uh, the next is the three-eyed fortune teller. It is two blue for a six-six wizard. Play with the top card of your deck revealed. As long as the top card of your deck is revealed this way and it is chant, you may play it by playing its cost. So it allows you to have free cards. Well, not free cards, but you get to see more cards. And if it's a chant, you can play it. As long as the top card of your deck is revealed this way and it's a chant. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, you still have to pay for it, but it, it gives you extra card draw, essentially. Because yeah. you're like, cool, reveal the top card. It's a chant, play it. Yeah, done. Cool. Not too bad. It's okay. And as far as I'm aware, the alternative cards, you can still kind of play those too. Yeah. All right. That is it for blue. We'll head into green now. All right, and now we're into green. The first card we got is a blank page. It is two green and one for an addition. Enter, remove target resonating your opponent controls from the game. If this card is awakened, search your opponent's deck, graveyard, and hand for all cards that share a name with that resonator. Remove them from the game as well. Awakening, rest to recover, J roll your control. Meh. It's cool. It can get rid of a dude, yeah. which is neat, but I mean, meh. Meh, exactly. Just meh. It seems kind of like a waste of space. Next one is Duet of Wind. It's uh, two green and two chant. Uh, quick cast, choose one and choose additional one for each. Recover J resonator, you can J ruler you control. Recover up to two magic stones you control. Okay, so it costs two. Cancel target spell, and then put a target non-magic stone from your graveyard to your, into your hand. Meh, question mark? This would be cool, but it costs so much. Yeah. It's so expensive. It's four mana to do all that. I mean, uh, technically it's two if you recover two stones, but then, eh. 
then why? Then why even play the card? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel that good. No. Uh, next is an Ancestor's Portrait. It is a green and one for enter. Put target magic stone from your graveyard into the field rested. Rest or recover generally your control. Look at the top three of your deck or your magic stone deck and put them back in any order. That's kind of cool because you can search your deck, your stone deck and get it set up. Cardo, this card's for you. You can fix your That's stones. Uh, yeah, I get, I get to actually get what I want. <laughs> So there's a ruler with that ability and this too? Done. Yeah. Neat. I get to I won't win. I'll just be able to have pretty magic. <laughs> Let's see. It's one white fairy tale moon. It is a moon edition, so it goes with the other stuff. Fairy tale resonators you control is plus two plus two. Magic stones you control gain tap produce a moon. Rest or recovered when J Ruler you control. Look at the top two cards of your deck. You may reveal fairy tale among them, put them in your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of the deck of any order. So, I don't know if it's as good as the spirit one, but this is still pretty decent. I think it I, is just because you get to go search for fairy tales. Like, it's just as, if you're playing fairy tales, you play this. If yeah. you don't, don't worry about it. Exactly. Done. Uh, next is Glinda the Fairy. She has two green for a 5-5 five, five fairy tale. Enter, target resonator cannot be blocked until the end of turn. Banish this card, cancel target non-resonator spell unless it's controller phase two. Oh. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, two mana don't block this creature, and then I can cancel your spell, whatever. Your yeah. chant. No, not to me. Chant, Regalia, Edition, any of those? Yeah, they have That's to. That's pretty nuts. They have to wait. They have to play around that card for sure. Next one is Little Red, Fairy Tale of Air. It's one green Fairy Tale Resonator. It's a 3 3. This card gains plus one, plus one for each wind magic stone you control. This card gains swiftness as long as you control a base wind magic stone. Well, that sounds familiar. She's so good. So good. Very sounds familiar. With the added bonus of the split card, uh, one green wind of gods, put target fire slash darkness resonator on top of its owner's deck. So good. This card's insanely strong because little red was already good back when she came out. Yeah. Because like red green stones count as wind stones. So you need to like multiple cards to count those. Yeah. And it just gives you an added bonus of if you're playing against red or black, you're like, I don't care about your dude. Just put it up. Just put that dude up. It's so good. Thanks. Definitely be using that card. Yeah. Next is the Magic Beanstalk. It is a green and one fairy tale uh, dish, or resonator. It's a zero ten. When the third or subsequent growth counter is put on this card, banish it. If you do, search your deck for a resonator and put it in the field, then shuffle your deck. I like it. Rest to recover J rule you control. Put a growth counter on this card. Here we go again. Sacrificial uh, altar, but not as strong. Yeah. But it is still altered nonetheless. Banish it. Okay, yeah. Still not too bad. You have to sacrifice one of your rulers to do it. And, but it is the third one, so that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see how funny and weird that gets. Next one is Magic Stone Bird. It's one and two. Uh, flying, seven, eight. Put target Magic Stone from your graveyard in the field rested. That's only if you do the ruler that does the banishing and all that fun stuff. Otherwise, why? Don't, yeah. don't play it. Uh, next is the Magic Stone Devotee. He is a green for three five. Banish this card. Target Magic Stone you control gets becomes a ten ten. Resonate until the turn. It's still a Magic Stone. That's cute, but not no reason to play it. I mean, it could get you there, but yeah, it's 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 cool. Yeah. Uh, Shahrazad Weaver Fairy Tales. It's one green and two. Eight eight. Enter. You may search your deck. For for addition or resonary with total cost one or less and put it in the field. If this card was awakened, you may search for both instead and shuffle the deck. Awakening, rest to recover J Ruler you control. So that's pretty easy. You so it's actually pretty good. So you can get any of the, the one green addition that like we just or the one blue one, right? Mm -hmm. That seemed overpowered. That or you can get like addition for your spirits or fairy tales and then another a one one that gets buffed by that, you know. Yeah, it's so, pretty nuts. It's pretty good for what it can do, but we'll see if you can live past this turn. Yeah. Next is the Awakening of Feasting. It is a green and X chant. Search your deck for a resonator with total cost X or less and put it into the field. If this card is awakened, search for two resonators with total cost X or less instead. Rest to recovered card named Feasting. I like this card. This card is amazing. Yeah. This card is in other card games and it's super good in those, so this card's... <laughs> automatically gonna be good like I, I hate saying that but yeah this card really is just good you pay five mana and you go get a four drop or less and if you tap feasting you go get two of them yeah and that's a lot of value solid 
I will go get two dudes for four for five minutes. Of your own accord. You get to do whatever you want. Yeah. So really good. Super good. Next one is the Hidden History of the Magic Stone War. One green addition. Enter, draw a card, rest to recover J Ruler you control, put a fairy tale resonator with total cost one or less from the graveyard to your hand. It could be useful. Could be good. The art's awesome. Yeah, the art is very amazing. Yeah, we'll have to see what this can do. It could be useful, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know about this card. Well, they cost one, so whatever you do is just interplay abilities. And depending on what you have, you can just create a loop of some sort, I'm sure. Uh, the next is the release of the fairy tales. It is a green and one for chant. Look at the top four of your deck, reveal a card from among them, and put it into your hand. If the reveal card is a fairy tale three or less, you may put it into play instead. Then shuffle your deck. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Because it gets any card for two mana, and if it's a fairy tale, you can put it in play. Yep. Which that's is, awesome. That's good. I like this card. Definitely, if you're playing fairy tales, use this. If you're not, you can still use this because it still digs four deep. Which yeah. Is pretty good. Next one is Trish, Spirit of Autumn Wind. It's two green and one quick cast spirit. 8-8, eight, eight, has flying. Enter, cancel target resident your spell unless the controller pays one for this card. Was awakened, cancel the chosen target instead. So awakening re uh, rest a recovered when J Ruler you control. I like this card. Yeah, this card's really strong. I think it's good. Because it's a counter spell that either taxes them or it's just free low counter spell. Mm -hmm. But it's also on an 8-8 eight, eight body. Yeah. <laughs> like, cool. I get an 8-8 eight, eight dude that counters your stuff. And, and flies too. So. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, next is Welser, the master of the six sages slash his last lecture. So Welser is two green for a six six. Um, with quick cast, enter return target spell to its owner's hand. If this card was put into the field with the effect of Zus lecture part, remove this card from the game and put two one one counters on each J rule you control. Okay, kind of weird. Uh, his last lecture is one green. Quick cast, recover a ruler you control. If it's a six sage, put this card as well, into play instead. Okay. So if you do green and white, then you can get zero up there. Yeah. This is really cool for zero, and it helps do a lot of stuff. And it, it's actually kind of cool because it returns the spell, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So I I would like to see that be a build round, and I want to see what people can do with this card. Yeah. This card probably has a lot of different options. Yeah. We just have to see what the, it can do. It has potential. Next one is Windstone Shot. It's one green, one quick cast. Choose one. If this card was awakened, choose up to two instead. Banish a magic stone. This card deals 1,000 damage to target J resonant here. That's terrible. But target magic stone from your graveyard to the field rested. Awakening. Recover. Rest to recover J ruler you control. Maybe? No. <laughs> no. It's okay. It's... I don't know. We'll see what it can do. I don't think it can do a lot. I think there's better, but it's okay. For sure. That is it for green, and we'll, we'll go into black. All right, next up is Darkness. It is, uh, we start with a Duet of Darkness. It is two black for a chant. Uh, choose one, you may choose an additional one for each recovered J ruler you control. Put a target resonator from your graveyard into your hand. Your opponent discards a card or resonates your opponent's control. Get minus two for each different magic stone among a mag magic stones Ooh, you control. That can be good. Yeah, this one would be really strong with Grizz Ballista because you're all about different magic stones. So definitely if you're playing him, play this card. Different name. Because yeah. I mean, it's a, <clears throat> it's a Grave Digger slash get, kill the board. Yeah. Uh, the world invaded. It's one black two enchantment. Destroy all non Cthulhu resonators at total cost three or less. Yes. Kill all the little dudes. Kill all the little dudes that everyone will be playing. Uh, next is one of the best cards printed in Force of Will. And it's on a new card with split with another one. Uh, Abdul Al Zahad is the poet of madness. He's two black for a 6 6. Resonators enter the field under your opponent's control. Don't cause their inter triggers to trigger yes which wrecks this whole set because like everything has an inner <clears throat> trigger and then the second part is dark pulse for four destroy all resonators with total cost two or less you may use that occasionally but, but for the most part you're going to play two men to play Al Al abdul yeah abdul because he's just nuts unless you really want to play happy cthulhu because that cthulhu is super happy <laughs> he's just like man i've made this world so dark thanks next one is assault from the demonic world it's a one one black quick cast. Target J Resonator you can, gains minus six, minus six until end of turn. Revenge. Destroy the chosen target instead. Oh, cool. They gave revenge back. Neat. Yeah, at least there's some support, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if you swing in a little dude, 
it gets killed, then you just kill whatever you want. Huh. Nice. Uh, next is the Awakening of the Magic Stones. This is one black chant, quick cast, remove any number of magic stones you control and or in your graveyard from the game, produce a black for each magic stone, remove this way. So if you need to get some quick mana real quick, you can. You only do it once, but hey. I mean, yeah, that better be your winning play. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to do it. Next one is Dark Sphere, Spirit of the Dark Net, or Night Nest. Anyways, it is a bird spear, all right? It's a 510 Darkness 2 Flying Bane. Enter. Put target resonator from your graveyard into the hand. If this card was awakened, put the target uh, from your graveyard onto the field instead. Uh, rest or recover Darkness J Roller you control. I like this card a lot. Yeah, this card's really strong. Definitely, if you're using Grizz Ballista, you play it. Yeah. Because it's just free load, get dudes back. It kills whatever it wants. It's a great blocker because it, it will probably survive most attacks and it kills whatever yeah. it wants to. Yeah, we've had our issues with a 510 before. Yeah. And it has flying, <laughs> so it's great. It's really great. Next is the Extraction Wizard. It is a one black for a 4 4. Enter, put the top card of your deck into your graveyard, recover a ruler you control. Rest to recover, J rule you control, remove a magic stone from your graveyard from the game, produce one will of any attribute. I actually kind of like this card. Because it can help you ramp up pretty quickly and it gives you the uh, recover ruler so you can do, you, if you use this right, you can play, you can play, a, get a stone and judgment at the same turn, which yeah. is kind of cool. Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> There's a joke to this of, I know what she can extract, right? Right? No, <laughs> just, but besides that, that's it. What Lilith's petal or Lotus petal? Sorry, Lilius. Lilius yeah. petal. Sorry, it's all blurred on the screens. It's a one darkness elf, human elf, human. Okay, it's a human. Quick cast four four. Enter. Destroy target damage J resonator. When this card is put in the field by effect of awakening of the uh, nine tail fox, put nine one one counters on this card. So it's split card is awakening of the nine tail fox. Is three darkness quick cast. This card deals 900 damage to each J Resonator if you control three or more magic stones with the different names. Put this card's, so basically uh, Lilith's Petal onto the field. That card's actually kind of cool. It's kind of good. I definitely see this card being used just because it can minus nine their board. And then if you control three or more, you get to play it. And then he kills another dude. And destroy target. So if it doesn't kill the biggest one, he comes in and kills the biggest one. Yeah. Which is pretty good. So yeah. They, definitely uh, usable. It's definitely usable, especially if you have the different stones. Oh, he, uh, he kills any of them, yeah, because he deals the damage. Yeah. Uh, next is the one-tailed fox. It is Aww. one black for a 3-4 beast uh, with drain. Rest, recover, J ruler, you control. This card deals 100 damage to target player and or J resonator. <laughs> Neat. Cute. So, I mean, you can you can ping them to death, but it seems really slow. Yeah, extremely <laughs> slow. Uh, secluded Fox Village. Uh, all these foxes went to the darkness. It's one addition. Enter. Destroy target resonator with total cost two or less. Pretty good. Rest of recover J ruler. You control target resonator. You control gains Bane until in a turn. <laughs> Neat. Pretty cute. Yeah. There's a lot of combat tricks you can do with that and scare them off from blocking. Uh, next is the Sparkling Boon of the Magic Stones. It is a black and two for a chant. Banish any number of Magic Stones. Draw X cards, then put X top cards of your Magic Stone deck into the field rested, where X is the number of Magic Stones banished this way. So cool. If you can get your Magic Stones back, you get free card draw, and you get to get new stones. I mean, the ideal time to do this is on turn three, because you lose no value, I guess. Yeah. But it's pretty neat. Pretty cute. Next one is Spirit of Regret. It's a uh, one darkness, one six six. Whenever a J ruler you control is recovered, this card gains plus two, plus two until the turn. It's okay. I mean, it becomes a 10 10 if you tap both your dudes, but. It's neat, yeah. It's, if you're playing spirits, it could be used, but it's kind of but, but cute. Yeah, don't don't really use it. Uh, next is Student at the Institute. It is a black and four for a 8 8 wizard. You may pay one less to play this card for each different name among all magic stones you control, so that's cool. Enter, you may banish up to two magic stones. For each magic stone banished this way, your opponent banishes a resonator, and you put a card from the top of your magic stone deck into the field rested. That's cute. Wow, so this dude can cost less for each stone that you have that's different, Yeah. and you get to kill their dudes. And you don't lose any stones, because yeah. if you kill the dude, you get a dude. You just get, you get more stone. stones. 
It's pretty cute. I that like card's that. actually pretty strong with Gru's Ballista. Yeah, for sure. Next one is Waking of Gru's Ballista. Speaking of, it's one in six chant uh, with the quick cast ability. You may pay two less to play this for each different name among magic stones you control. Magic stones you control become 10-10 resonators until in a turn. They are still magic stones. If this card was awakened, they gain swiftness, barrier eternal until in a turn. Awakening, recover a card name, group lista you control. This card's awesome. This card's very awesome. It's it's a it's like a throwback to his other card that he used to do this with, but it's super good. Because it does it to all of your stones. Yeah. You're like, cool, all my stones are big. So late late game, you know for one darkness, you you're gonna swing for a lot at that time and they don't die so yeah so i think that could be a fun game ender uh next is the transformed it is a black human cthulhu a one one enter your opponent discards a card your opponent loses four life what <laughs> solid that seems awesome one black discard a card take four <laughs> great i'll do that all day you slap their hand and their face <laughs> and you're just like your turn you're like oh th thanks i guess thanks that yeah. card's really strong. That's really strong. And that's a one drop, so you can like loop it with that one card, right? Yeah. Well, maybe, possibly. We'll have to check. Next is the oh, Ultra yeah. Magic Stone Stone Golem. He is a black and eight for a 2020 resonator. Okay. Precision and Pierce. Pierce. Keyword. You may pay two less to play this for each different name amongst magic stones you control and enter, destroy all J resonators opponent control with attack less than the attack of this card. <laughs> This card's great. So yeah, this is the new like quote unquote final battle because if you have lots of different magic stones, which you will, if you're playing this. Yeah. Then he just comes in as like a 20 to the board. Thanks. Thanks. And if you played final battle back in the day, that's pretty much what you always did was take 20 to do that. Yeah. And now you don't. You just like this card comes into play and everything pretty much dies. And yeah. it's your opponent control. So you're going to have whatever you want. Yeah. This dude's nuts. Uh, I like the stone deck idea here. This is working really well. With that, we'll go into the multicolor. All right, now for the multicolor, the first card is a sacrifice of words and memories. It's a blue and a red one chant. You may pay one red less to play this card if you control a card named My List. It could be one blue less if you control a name uh, Mo Mojdart. So it could be literally one. Search your deck for a fire spirit and or water spirit. Reveal them, put them in the first in your hand and the second one in the graveyard. And shuffle your deck, recover ruler you control. Weird. Really weird. I don't. Huh. We'll see what that can imagine. That, that could to. do a lot. We're just not sure exactly how it would. Yeah. Around. So we'll build around. Question yeah. mark. All right. Next is one of the Cthulhu dudes. Yes. He's Azathoth, the manifestation of death. He is a blue and a black for his one seven with Bane. Enter. Draw two cards, then discard a card. If this card is awakened, look at your opponent's hand and choose a card. They remove it from the game. Awakening is a black and a blue. But if you're playing Wolfgang, awakening is zero, which yep. this card is then busted. Yes. Because I will draw two, discard a card, and thought and like take a card from you because I can. Yeah. Cards it, nuts. It's super great. And I love also with these Cthulhu's, they look like they're one body. Yeah. Like if you put them all in the field at once, they look probably look like an awesome monster. But except for this one, the deeper ones, it's a black and a blue Cthulhu, four six. You may have any number of copies of this card in your deck. It has Pierce. This card gains plus two, plus two for each Cthulhu in the graveyard. Enter. Search your deck for a card named Deeper Ones. Reveal it and put it in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So what if you do, instead of, if infinite matchsticks get banned, do you just play infinite Deeper <laughs> Ones? Or it's just 40 Deeper Ones and you just go ham on it? I mean, you could. I mean, you never will run out of them and you just keep swinging. And if they're dead, then you just keep playing them and they get bigger. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, next is Haster, the Messenger of Madness. He's a red and blue for a Cthulhu 6-7 with quick cast. Uh, awakenings for a red and a blue. Enter. Cancel target spell or ability that targets Cthulhu you control. If this card is awakened, you may copy the target before canceling it. Instead, you may choose new targets for the copy. So if you swing in and they're like, kill your dude, you're just like, cool, no. Cancel no. that. Kill your dude. Kill your dude. Yeah, this is mine. Thanks. This is my spell now. Enjoy it. This dude's really strong. Like all the Cthulhu dudes are going to be wild to use with him. You just got to figure out which ones you want to use and what you want your deck to do. All right, next one is Magic Stone Research uh, Initiate. Oh, yeah, Institute. It's a darkness and green addition. Enter. 
It's not a location, which is weird. Uh, banish a magic stone. Put a top card of your magic stone in the deck in the field. Uh, hold on. So just, it doesn't come in the field rest, so you're kind of a mana wrapping at that point. J Resonators you control gain plus two plus two for each different name among all magic stones you control. And then rest or recover J Ruler you control. Remove all cards in your opponent's graveyard from the game. Oof. Oh. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. It just sits there and be like, ah, remove your stuff if yep. you can. Could be good. Could be awesome. And we'll see how powerful it can get. You'll probably definitely need it immediately when you play against infinite matchsticks. Yeah. Because that'll help every turn you can do it. So it's a slow death, but it's better <laughs> than turn two. Uh, next is Minfia, the storytelling girl. She is a blue white 4 7 spirit fairy tale human. Okay. Rest or recover J ruler you control. Put two one counters on each spirit and or fairy tale. Oof. J ruler you control. That's good. So yeah, if you're playing fairy tales or spirits, you play this because yeah. it helps either one, and it helps a lot. Constantly. All right, Necronomicon, Book of the Outer World. It's a red, blue, and black. You may pay a red and a blue less to play this card if your ruler is Wolfgang. So okay, cool. So it costs a black. If you do put a madness counter on your ruler, oh. Non-J Resonator entities you control loses all enter abilities. Cthulhu's you control gain plus four, plus four. Okay. So this stops any of your like regalias, additions, all that kind of stuff entering and triggering things. That's where this stops. Like all the enter do things on additions. No, no. You don't get those. Stay home. So. And all my Cthulhu's get plus four, plus four. I like this card as like a one or two of because it's not like super strong, but it's not. I mean, it is really strong, but it's it's not going to be totally game breaking. Would you do more just sideboard though? I would probably do some sideboard, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is a really good lord for all your Cthulhu dudes. Yeah, because it costs one darkness, and it stops them from doing the things if you're playing against them. For yeah, sure. and it doesn't so. have to cost one darkness. If you have nothing else to do, you're like, cool, I'll play this for yeah. three, and I don't get a Magnus counter. Yeah, sweet. So pretty, pretty good, pretty decent. All right. Oh, this is you. Yeah. Uh, or, no. No. Okay. No other tap. Bringer of World War, it's a darkness and red, precision, 8-4. Whenever this card destroys a Resonator, put two 1-1 counters on this card. And this makes it amazing. Awakening, uh, red and a black, enter, destroy up to two target Resonators your opponent's control. Players cannot chase to this ability. So no matter what, you're killing two dudes. It's J's too. J Resonators. Oh, J Resonators, yeah. And you can do this for a free madness, and he's huge after yeah. that. Yeah, this dude's nuts with Good Wolf Game because you're like, cool, reawakening, kill your dudes. And now I'm huge. Thanks. And I can just keep swinging in your dudes if I want to. Next is Satan's Phantasmal Body and Flame of the Outer World. So Satan's Phantasmal Body is a red and a black for a 6-6 god slash illusion? Yes. Um, and then enter, remove target, remove two madness counters from your ruler, which hey. is really cool. And then while you're searching your deck, you may play this card from your deck while, by playing its cost. You may play either part of the alternative cost. So you can play this one or the bottom part while you're searching. Yeah. And the bottom is Flame of the Outer World. as the red and a black quick cast. This card deals 800 damage to target J Resonator. Players cannot chase to this card. So it's kind of cool if you really need to spot kill something. You're like, cool, kill that dude. Yeah. Because I can and you can't stop me. I'm, I'm going to be slightly mean here, but the Flame of the Outer World looks like just death to furries i guess because that looks like not a that looks like a costume and not a wolf creature because it looks like yeah. a human face in the inside burning <laughs> yeah i'm sorry but <laughs> so really good definitely if you're playing yeah if with, you're playing cthulhu man you play that card because yeah. it gets rid of madness and you need that yeah for sure sure uh Nugarath, gatekeeper of the outer world it's a 4-4 red and black uh cthulhu if a fire chain you control would deal damage it deals damage to that plus 400 instead uh, darkness chance you control gain drain and then uh, enter search your deck for a cthulhu reveal it put it in your hand and then shuffle your deck if this card was awakened produce a red and a black awakening is one red so this one's not as much as the cost that you want to pay for madness yeah, point you do. yeah you do yeah yeah you do because turn two you i just do realized this. what this card does so it gives you the free two mana to play the card we just read the, the Satan one? The, the Flame of the Outer World. Oh. That then... deals 1,200 damage, and you get 12 life. Because it gives it drain, and it gives it plus 4 damage. Yeah. So you're like, cool, take 12. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. And it gives you the free 2 mana to play it. Yeah, exactly. 
that this dude's a lot better than I gave him credit for because I didn't realize that until we just saw it. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, it's just what you want your Cthulhu dudes to do because like all the Cthulhu dudes are really low costing and they have the madness of something cool because that's what the deck's supposed to do. Yeah. So it's how you want to build it. But it's definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah. Next is Spirits of Fire and Water. It is a red and a blue for 6-6. Six, six. This card gets plus 4, plus 4 as long as you control Mylest. This card gets Quick Cast as long as you control Mujdart in all zones. Um, and then this card gets Prevent the first damage that will be dealt to this card as each turn as long as you control a card named Mujdart. Okay, so not too bad. Pretty cool. Actually, a 10-10 Quick Cast is pretty good. That blocks for free the first time. Yeah. Yeah, that dude's that dude's pretty silly. Yeah, I agree. Again, playing spirits, you play it. Go for it. Symphony of the Two Great Dragons. Uh, it's a. Uh, I don't see instruments in their hand. Uh, it's two white, two blue. Chant. Return all non-magic stone, non-jeweled entities to their owner's hand. If this card was awakened, you may put a spirit slash fairy tale from your card to into the field. Yeah. Uh, awakening recover. Uh, rest or recover jeweler you control. I don't know. How do you feel about this? I I kind of like it because it gets rid of all the extra stuff in the way and then you get a free dude in play. Yeah. Well, what, like in a spirit slash fairy tale deck, what is worth putting onto the field for free? I guess, I don't know. It only slows your opponent down. It doesn't stop them. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. We'll have to see what it can do. I yeah. feel like a lot of the stuff's just going to have to be built and see what it can do. Exactly. Next is the Magic of Trust and Love. It is a red and a blue for chant, quick cast. You may rest a recovered card named Mylest or Mushtar you control rather than pay this card's cost. Nice. Choose one. If you control Mylest and a card named Mushtar, choose both. Draw a card or this card deals 7 damage to target player or J Resonator. It's not too bad. It's I cool. If you're playing those two, I would say use it, but otherwise don't. Yeah. It's not worth it. It really isn't. Next one is Umar Artoya, Artoya? Uh, Key Master of the Outer World. It's an 8-8 eight, eight Cthulhu. So you play a blue, red, and black for this. Remove this card from your hand from the game. Produce either a red, blue, or black. Spin this only to play Cthulhu cards. You may play this card from your removed area. Okay. Uh, awaken a red, blue, black. Enter, put target resonator from your opponent's graveyard into the field under your control. <laughs> yeah. This guy is basically amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, basically, he's super strong. <laughs> he's really good. So let's just say turn one, you discard their great dude, right? With the other Cthulhu. Turn two, you can play this guy for two, or for two stones, because you remove him to produce a color. Then you tap the two wheels you have, it comes into play, you can grab that dude. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, this dude's pretty good for what you're playing with Wolfgang. Cause yeah, yeah. You just get the free awakening and be like, I want your dude. Cool. I, I want your dude. That big dude you have, I need it. Yeah, and you can ramp with him real quick. Uh, next is Wolfgang's Apocalypse. Ooh. It is a blue and a black for one of the coolest arts I've seen. Yeah. It's quick cast, chant. Your opponent banishes a resonator, put the top X cards of your deck into your graveyard where X is the total cost of the resonator banished. If this card is awakening, Awakened, you may play two up to two Cthulhu's from your graveyard without paying their cost until the end of turn. If you do at the next end of turn, their controller banishes them. Awakening is a red and a black. So, okay. Without paying their cost until the end of turn if you do the next the next end of turn. So you gotta do it at the end of theirs so they can swing. Yeah, so you make them banish the thing and then you, you mill cards and you get free dudes. So it's kind of cool because you get free dudes into play if you awaken it. Yeah. But otherwise, you don't have to. Otherwise, it's just banish a dude, which is kind of cool as a quick cast. Banish a dude, mill some. Yeah, not too bad. I like it. I think it's worth it. It's just going to be depending on what they have. I like it as well. So we'll see how how good and crazy this can get. Ooh, Yogg's Soth. So Toth. So Toth, yeah. Uh, True Hunger. It's a blue and a red Cthulhu. So 0 10, Cthulhu Resonators you control gains swiftness, which can be great. But enter this card gains plus 1000 until end of turn. If this card was Awaken, Resonators you control gain plus 1000 and Pierce until end of turn instead. Awakening is a blue and red, but who knows how good this card is. I don't know. We'll see. I like it just because it gives your dude swiftness, which yeah. is really strong. I mean, for turn two, it is a 10 10 swinging. And then your other dudes are coming in swinging as well. 
Well, it just blocks. Yeah, and it doesn't have to awaken on turn two. You're just like, cool, pay two mana. This dude's big, dark, yeah. done. Uh, that is it for the multicolor. We're gonna go into the stones now, and we're gonna start off with the Moon Breeze Memoria, which is uh, tab produce a white or a moon mana. So cool. Good. I haven't seen much that actually does with moon that I can remember. I don't know, but also the magic stone, the demonic world. Produce a black, or you can produce a red and a blue. Spin this will only play cards with multiple attributes and no other attributes other than red, blue, or black. So it keeps you from going too crazy. Yeah, so literally in Wolfgang. Yeah. Uh, the magic stone of the six sages. Enter, recover, really control. Yes. Tap, produce one. Tap, produce one will of any attribute. Play this ability only if you control or recover J ruler. This card's really, really good. Yeah, really, really good. So, so you tap, produce the stone, that thing becomes untapped, and then you can do all other abilities of all the tap your ruler things. This card's really good in any deck. Any, any deck, It doesn't yeah. have to be a six stages. It's better with six stages because they get stuff, but yeah. like any deck can use this thing. It's and nuts. It untaps them so you can also judgment as well. So Yeah. And it's whatever color you want. So there's more five color shenanigans. This card's so good. Yeah. It's just use that stone. It's just a good stone. It's just a gray stone all <laughs> yeah. the time. That is it for the Magic Stone War set. It's a wild set. Yeah. I'm excited to build with it. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, all I know is I'm going to build Wolfgang because I, it's, it's tribal. It looks good. A, it's tribal and I love tribal bullshit. And, yeah. And it's just, and, you know. I, I think... Besides the super heavy hitters, there's a lot of hidden gems in this in the set. We just have to figure out what to brew with them, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, there's a lot of cards that can be used and want, like will be used. I think Almerius is one of the other really good six stages that people aren't like looking at right now. Yeah. But, I mean, as long as... Uh, in my head, I'm just like, get rid of uh, infinite mash sticks and then we can talk what <laughs> meta yeah. we can do. Because otherwise, it's that. Yeah. We'll see what this set holds for us, but be ready. We're going to have some new brews coming out very soon. So we'll see you all again next time. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel. And then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.